So lately I've been looking into ways that I can extend my Steam Deck experience even further. And when I really started to think about ways that I could customize my experience, one of the first things that sprang to mind was that a lot of you had recommended that I check out Decky Loader. However, before I dove headlong into that and probably no small amount of tinkering, first what I wanted to do was just kind of see what kind of light customizations that I could get away with just using what's already there. So that's what today's video is all about. Not a very long video, I just wanted to poke around a little bit and look at a few of the different ways that you can customize your Steam Deck experience as it is before I make an entirely separate video just on Decky Loader because I'm anticipating that I will probably run into at least a few technical hurdles in the course of making that video. So all that being said, let's just go ahead and start off by talking a little bit about the aesthetics because if you're interested in changing the aesthetics of what everything looks like in your Steam Deck's interface, there are really only two major things that you can change and that would be the startup movie and the keyboard. And let's go ahead and get the aesthetics out of the way first because really there are only two options that I could find and that would be to change your keyboard or your startup movie. There's maybe a dozen or so different keyboard options natively within the Steam store, and while a couple of them look pretty great, most of them are pretty lackluster. The same goes for the startup movies you can buy there. I mean, there are ones like Elden Ring or Vampire Survivors, which is cool, but I kind of figured there'd be like hundreds of options to choose from, so this was really surprising to me. And here's the thing, there isn't a way to completely retheme the entire Steam Deck experience natively, and that's really what made me start looking into Decky Loader because I've seen some people with gorgeous menu organization on their Steam Deck, and I really wanted to mess around with that. But for now, even though I was a little disappointed to not see a ton of customization options that you could do within SteamOS, there are quite a few little options hiding out in the system settings for the Steam Deck that can make things better all the time, or at least in very specific scenarios. So let's go ahead and start broad with some of these functionality improvements, and then niche down into a couple of edge cases. For starters, if you're always prompted to install something to the wrong drive, you can set the default installation location for games by going to Manage Storage here, and then just hit X on either your SD card or the internal SSD, and whichever one has the gold star is the one where games are going to be installed by default. Which, that can be helpful if you're big on keeping things organized, and speaking of, this next tip doesn't really count as customization necessarily, more so functionality, although you can keep these filters in place permanently if you want, and that felt like customization to me. But whatever you call it, it's super helpful to utilize search filters, especially if you have a large library of games to sift through. If you go to your library on the Steam Deck, there's some really great filter functionality available that can help you narrow down what to play. I find this pretty useful for when I don't know exactly what game I want to play, but I have some big idea of the genre I feel like playing, and I'm looking for ideas of what could be fun. Or there have also been times where I've had a few friends trying to coordinate some game to play online together, and we have all done that using filters for multiplayer or co-op, which can be pretty handy. Beyond that, you can get pretty nuanced with how you filter games out by being as broad as only showing the games you have locally installed, or as granular as isolating specific tags to track games down. Again, this is more of a feature than a customization, but considering you can leave a filter in place as long as you'd like, effectively customizing your view, I still felt it warranted inclusion here. Next up, you can really wrangle your notifications a very specific way within SteamOS, which can be helpful if you just hate being annoyed by pop-ups. It can be really helpful to fine tune these, especially if you're a content creator who's regularly capturing gameplay footage like I do. Sometimes I forget to disable notifications and have had just friend notifications pop up and interrupt some emotionally arresting part of a game I'm playing, which does take some of the magic out of it. And it's pretty cool that you can modify the sound and the toast notification, which if you're like, what is a toast notification? What that means is the small pop-up message that you see on screen every now and then to let you know that a friend is online or something like that, and then it goes away on its own. Also, a real quick side note, I do want to point out that I did go down a bit of a rabbit hole when I was looking into toast notifications. Some people suggest that the origin of toast notifications actually comes from Mortal Kombat and having the toasty animation pop up on screen when you do a particularly grisly uppercut. I don't think that's really where it comes from, but it is an interesting thought, and in my head and that will always be the origin for toast notifications. But yeah, in a nutshell, there's a lot of fine-tuned control you have over notifications here, like what actually deserves a notification and when notifications themselves will be displayed to you, whether that's anytime or if you'd like, you can disable them in-game like I do. Something else I've changed now and again is the option under the Downloads menu, which allows you to download games while you're playing them, although I would not recommend enabling this most of the time. Like every now and then if I'm downloading a game that I'm really excited to play but want to play another game while I wait, I'll enable this if what I'm playing is a fairly lightweight title. Mostly I would not recommend this, however, because there have been times where I forgot to disable this setting and had something downloading to my SD card in the background while I was playing a game from the SD card and it did start to get really weird from a performance perspective in a few cases. So mostly I would say to heed Steam's warning about the default setting and just leave this off, but again, sometimes if you're playing something lightweight like Binding of Isaac or something you can get away with it, you can go ahead and turn this on if you want. Recommended? No, but you can do it. 
And finally, this is a weirdly specific one, but you can change your controller's mappings of A and B to X and Y to be like Nintendo's controllers if you want. Normally I wouldn't care about this, but lately I've been using a Switch-styled 8-bit Do controller in docked mode, and it actually does have a Switch layout, I just didn't notice because I always assume that everything's the Xbox layout. Meaning that when I'm hitting the bottom face button that should be A on the Steam Deck's control layout, I'm actually hitting B on this controller's layout. For some players this might be helpful, but again, since I typically feel my way through the console and PC controller navigation just by remembering what position the correct button is in, I don't enable it because it would be really weird for me to try to switch positions, but hey, having the option is nice if you two are using a controller with a switch layout and prefer the letters on the buttons to match the input that you're throwing at it. All right, and that's it for this video. Nothing really earth shattering. Essentially, I just kind of dove into the Steam Deck menu and decided I would start poking around and I would make the video as long as it could be based on whatever I found. And there's really not a whole lot in terms of how much you can customize your experience on the deck using just what's already there. But if your experience has been different or I just completely overlooked something obvious, please do let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as what's coming down the pike, I do still plan to do the decky loader video probably next week. Again, it depends on how uh, <laughs> technically in depth that gets, I guess. And then also we'll be looking at some of the games coming out in June and later this week. I should have a dedicated video just on Crow Country because that has been an amazing time. So anyways, as always, thank you so much for your time. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.